in the ever-evolving discussion around the EcoBoost cars, you know, I get a lot of people chiming in, which is great, because it creates an open dialogue and it keeps the conversation moving forward other than just, you're stupid, no, you're dumb, no, you're dumb, you don't know what you're talking about, you know, that kind of bull crap. So, uh, you know, in the last video I made about talking and, you know, about some of the not great information, some of the EcoBoost professionals or whatever um, have given me personally throughout my endeavor with this thing. Uh, and, and it's not even just this car. I even got just unsavory responses when I was in the SHO. It's just like, it's just, and I'm sure it's industry-wide, it's a problem. But now that I'm in EcoBoost land, yeah, it's here too, unfortunately. And I want to talk about that because I think it was a huge problem. And I still think it's a huge problem, but either way, uh, you know, there's still a lot more to talk about. And there was a comment in that video, you know, they have to like keep pushing the boundaries and stuff, you know, to make the platform better and whatnot. I don't disagree with that, but this is my take on, on that. My argument with that is, I already believe we know everything we need to know about the EcoBoost platform at least the current generation up until 2023. I don't, this whole new EcoBoost four cylinder engine in the uh, S650 cars might change a lot of what we do know. But keeping the everything before then, S550 gen stuff, I do believe we know pretty much everything we need to know. We know what the uh, strengths are. We know what the weaknesses are. There's really not much more we can find out about this current gen EcoBoost, and um, that's my take on that. So these these shops, they can go out there and keep trying to push these things and run numbers and create very expensive parts that aren't going to help the platform move any more further than it already is. And that's my take on that. This is where it is. I, I honestly do not, and I don't think I know. This is just, I know the aftermarket is not putting the attention where it's needed for this platform. So, uh, for example, um, we know early on that the open deck die cast two, three blocks were a problem. That's why everyone started going to the 2.0 sandcast block, and it actually proved to be so much better, um, you know, at high horsepower. Even the MZR uh, Mazda block, same casting just regular old sand casts when the unfortunate part is, you know, uh, die cast is supposed to be stronger. And it probably is if it wasn't open deck. Like if manufacturers can create die cast blocks with the same deck as two a block, then yeah, that the two three block at that point probably would have been superior. But it's that open deck, you know, it's the thin bores. Um, with not much support around them and limited surface on the top for the gasket to actually seal against. It's just a bad, I don't care what engine platform it is, bad for sealing, bad for strength because, you know, at, there, there's boards, they're going to deflect a little bit and move around. It's just, it, it's not a good recipe for high horsepower, high performance or High performance and longevity, I should say. Um, high performance for some period of time. That's why every serious badass engine that is being built on an open deck platform fills in the coolant passages and does standard coolant holes. Um, you know, like the uh, cylinder support system stuff. So we knew that early on. In order to make high reliable power, you needed to either fill a 2-3 block or use a 2-0 block. We realized that Gen 1 rods sucked. Uh, Gen 2 rods are better, but still only up to a certain point, so obviously you need forged I-beam or some really beefy H-beam stuff to handle decent power. So we learned that. We learned what head gaskets work best. We realized even just factory RS gaskets hold crap tons of power before they decide to crap out on you. And they're like 80 bucks, so they're like the cheapest option too. We learned so much. And uh, we learned that the cylinder heads are absolute garbage with the head of full design. And that right there is the biggest Achilles heel to this platform that not one single company that I am aware of at least. And if you are, please chime in. 
because I like to know. But as far as I know, there isn't one single company in the aftermarket for these cars outside of porting and all that stuff who's actually addressed the cylinder head issue. Not one. It's that part alone that limits this platform from greatness. Because honestly, uh, compared to like, um, you know, K-series stuff and whatnot from Honda, if we had a halfway decent cylinder head, dude, we would be pretty, we would be up there with K-series stuff. Because the bottom ends, like 2.0 blocks handle crap tons of power. You sleep with 2.0 block. You are good for 1,000 plus. I don't know how beyond that, but it, it's 1,000 plus all day long. Um, you know, even reinforced 2.3 blocks. As long as you get that situated, the blocks will hold up. They're good for 1,000 plus horsepower. The cranks are strong as hell on these engines, surprisingly. For the most part, and all of these really super high horsepower cars are using Ford crank chests, factory cranks. They're balanced, but as far as I know, they're not using billet cranks. I'm not sure to what horsepower level you need a billet crank because I don't think anyone's really got that far with it. even the uh, Mazda stuff, maybe. Uh, but for the most part, I know that the cranks are good for a thousand horsepower. So our bottom ends on these things are stout. We figured this out. You get some good rods, pistons, factory cranks good, Factory blocks are good when set up correctly. The cylinder heads are garbaggio. The max effort, I mean, balls to the wall, port it to the last bit you could possibly port. Biggest possible cams you can fit that would make the car completely useless anywhere but a racetrack is the only combination that has ever gotten this head of fold generation EcoBoost upwards to four digit power consistently. And it's really tapping out. I can only imagine what back pressure readings you are. You probably have to run a turbo with a uh, you know exhaust side very large to limit back pressure. All the back pressure is going to be coming out of the integrated manifold. That is going to create all your back pressure. So there's going to be a point where that is a restriction. It's going to be, and you're never going to get around it. And from my understanding, there's water passages or something, coolant passages, right in that head of fold design. So you can't even pour them out that much without breaking into those water jackets. So, you know, until we figure out cylinder head for these cars, they're kind of where they are and where they will always be. I don't think there's really pushing them any further than where they're at. That is the limiting factor. And that's why the aftermarket needs to focus on cylinder heads. Not $2,000 billet intake manifolds. We need cylinder head mods. I mean, yeah, with that, you think a $2,000 billet manifold, just imagine you get to let these aftermarkets go and make a damn billet cylinder head or something for these cars and charge like six grand. No one's spending six grand for that. So that's another problem is, is there even a market for something that, you know, for the part we really need for these cars. That there are some good factory parts out there that can be modified. Uh, if someone's willing to put the time and effort to R&D it, I think there's enough good stuff out there between the older Mazda and the Duratec stuff that can be retrofitted to e EcoBoost application. That way we can have a multi-port exhaust manifold that's not going to be a restriction. That's where the focus needs to be on this platform. Uh, yeah. So that's, you know, where I'm at with that. I think that's what we need. That is the key. That is like the golden key to easy four-digit power with this platform. Because without it, we are stuck. And I don't know. I mean, do you agree? Is that is that what we need? I think it is. And I think there is definitely some good solutions out there, but no one, not one of these companies wants to really invest in it. You know, they're kind of just where they are, and the parts they do make are not helping the platform move forward. I don't care what size turbo kit you get on this car. It's not going to, it's only going to go so far. I don't care what manifold you put on this engine. It's only going to go so far. Until we get flow in and out of that cylinder head to be optimal for higher horsepower builds, we are done. I know, we know everything we need to know about this platform. 
At 650, it might be a whole different set of challenges, learning the new EcoBoost platform. Um, Ford says it's all new. I don't know how much all new is all new. A lot does look different. I see a lot of nice things at it, and I see a lot of things that are definitely going to be a problem going forward, like that integrated uh, EGR system. These cars don't have an EGR system, which I thought was actually kind of interesting. It's actually the first car. Um, eh, maybe the SHO didn't have one either, but I was always used to dealing with EGR systems, mainly systems that crapped out after, you know, 15, 20 years of age, and you had to replace a bunch of parts. But yeah, integrated uh, exhaust gas recirculation system. Sounds like trouble. It really does. So we'll have to wait and see whenever. I don't even want to know, but right now with the newest stuff we have, we're still going back to the older stuff because it's just better. It's better for the purpose of extracting the most power. You know, that's the thing. Like this whole discussion is basically on people wanting the most power. And I think we have a lot of other good stuff out there that the comp none of these companies don't want to um, invest time in. And I'm not saying no one's done this. I know some of the companies kind of uh, mess with it. I know it, like Esslinger does. I forget which ones it was, but um, utilizing the 2.5 Duratec block. Uh, it's part of the same family. As far as I know, almost everything works. I don't think, I think the crankshaft the same. The only thing I think is different is just the bore size and uh, the rod length because the deck is higher on a 2.5. So, but for me, and eventually, I would love to explore an EcoBoost build utilizing a 2.5 block because it's pretty much the same cast as a 2.0 block. It's basically a board 2.0, a board and stroke 2.0. Uh, so I don't know why we don't utilize the 2.5 more than we do, but I think there's a lot of benefits in a 2.5 block, especially if you want a sleeve. You know, you can take a 2.5 block and put some big sleeves in it without having to mill out a bunch of material in the block itself. So you get more strength and you still retain a good size bore. Uh, you don't have to like close your bore size up just for sleeves. The higher deck height, you can run a longer rod. So a longer rod will give you a better... Um, rod to stroke ratio, which I think is another massively overlooked opportunity when building these cars. Almost no one that I know in the aftermarket, once again, other than Esslinger, offers longer rods uh, for these engines to reduce your uh, rod to stroke ratio. They've even identified that the short rod to stroke ratio that these have is one of the biggest contributing to factor why Gen 1 rods snapped. Um, and they put too much side loading on the cylinder wall. And I think that is a great observation from them. I think we need to utilize and look more into uh, longer rods for the, when building these engines. Um, I think there's just so much overlooked potential in this platform that most of the shops, most of the aftermarket companies are completely overlooking. And it's upsetting. Uh, because they're focusing their attention on parts we don't need. They're focusing their time and effort on things we don't need or want. And it's they're creating overly expensive parts that are not benefiting us. That's why I would love to, at one point, once I get a little bit more settled in, like this year is definitely going to be better financially for me. Um, so once I have a little bit of extra money laying around, I think I'm going to end up buying a you know like salvage two five from whatever I can get it cheap one and I'm gonna tear it down and I'm gonna I'm gonna tear it down I'm gonna look at that cylinder head I'm gonna uh, you know compare as much as I can to what I already know about the two three and the two five like thankfully I still have the two three block I can compare everything to I guess I'll just take the the two three block and mock up like you know what needs to be done or is it just a direct swap for a two five head on a two three block or 2 block, but it'd probably be just a whole 2.5 setup, honestly, with like 2.3 internals. I got the 2.3 crank still, so I'll be able to check all of that and see if it all works. And I would love that. I think there's a better combo out there that no one's really investigating. I know they exist. I've seen threads on them. But the big companies don't, aren't working on it. For whatever reason, I don't know why. And that's why I really think they're hurting the EcoBoost platform. That's why I've kind of been making these videos. I don't think the aftermarket and these, these all these 
shops or whatever are actually helping us get to where we want to be with this car. I think they're hurting us for the most part. And I think now it's time that the enthusiast go back to the roots of hot rodding. We need to get back to, uh, you know, tearing apart stuff ourselves and putting stuff back together and seeing what works. I think people have gotten very complacent on trusting these shops and businesses to do the R&D for them to determine what they're going to buy for their build that these shops, you know, they either intentionally or unintentionally overlook a lot of important factors and a lot of platforms. And I think it stifles the process. I think it stifles growth and learning opportunities with some platforms. And I definitely think it's hurt us here with the four cylinder EcoBoost stuff. So let me know what you think. I think it's going to finally wrap it up here for this video. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with everyone you know. If you want some more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep looking out for the next. Cars created video.